Andrew Sloan, welcome. Thank you. He is a therapist, coach, and strategist. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> the big three things which are very important today. Mm. And we've just been actually talking about um, many things which we could have actually kept talking for a very long time. Because <laughs> Andrew has such a beautiful understanding mm. about people and the mind and what's happening in society mm. and just could just talk about many, many things. So we're going to actually start, of course, <laughs> with, of course, we have the interesting <laughs> shift stories. The first question I wanted to ask you is, what is your story? Yeah, well, that's a big question. It is. Um, I, I suppose I, when I'm asked similar questions, I think of the spaces that I create. Um, my story is often about um, creating spaces for people to be become a little bit more aware, um, to transform unconscious experiences that we might be asleep to, towards more consciousness, towards more, um, yeah, some people might call that wakefulness, some people might call that um, more awareness. I find that those spaces where we become a bit more aware and connected to what's really going on, um, becoming a bit more resourceful, um, moving from a few tools to a lot more tools or having more options on how to kind of respond to the world or to each other. Um, yeah, that's who I am. I, I call myself therapist, coach and strategist. Um, yes. they're, they're more terms to make it easy to understand how you invest in my time. Um, but it's really about creating spaces where we can become more aware about who we are and who these wonderful people who are around us that sometimes challenge us, sometimes excite us, um, <laughs> who are around us, so yeah. He's, just so you know, Andrew is just, because I've known a lot of therapists and coaches and mm. um, just so, there's so much kind of heart and connection and mm. you're accessible and I mm. think that's what I love about talking to you about everything mm. and oh my goodness, the knowledge he has about future proofing ourselves <laughs> i can't even get us going well we might touch on that <laughs> i may but yeah. <laughs> i love it because it is it's, you really bring it back to the truth about mm. who we are and why we're here and and your story too i mean because were you doing were you therapist how long have you been a therapist for what were you doing before then or? well uh yeah i've been a fully certified therapist for about 12 months now yeah. um but i've been doing coaching for um, about three to four years now because um, you go into businesses yeah. and corporates and talk about... Yeah, these spaces that I create are for individuals in my private practice, just up here on Elizabeth Street, yeah. or um, in teams. So I support CEOs, their senior leaders, um, and their entire teams to kind of wake up in many ways. Yeah. I think for me, it's taking the fuss out of some of these things. Yes. Because I think there's been um, historically quite a, quite a wall between really great therapy and allowing people to access it without yeah. that fear or stigma or yeah. um, going only broken people go to therapists. I know, because um, that's such a thing which annoys me. Because it's yeah. like, a therapist is a great place. I mean, I went to therapy for 10 years and I loved it because each yeah. week I could talk. Yeah. I could talk and talk and talk and yeah. talk. And it's great and I got hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of my clients said, um, it's kind of like chiropractor for my brain. <laughs> um, it's just like a realignment. It's a, it's a way of being self-reflected yeah, yeah. um, about what's happened in the past, yeah. integrating that into what's going on right now. Yeah. And then starting to look forward as well. We kind of miss that part in yeah, some yeah. Um, concepts of therapy. We definitely start to reauthor a life, you know, start to look forward a bit into yes, the good stuff. Very important. Mm. Well, yes, it's a big question, I know, but thank you for sharing a little bit because I wanted to, people to know who you are. And what's the best advice you've ever received? I think the best advice I have received and often give now yeah. is that success in life, yes. the thing that you define as success, um, is always an inside job. And I love that. So it true. is always a process of working within yeah. ourselves yeah. to unravel the complexity of who we are. Yeah. Because when we start to unravel that complexity of us, we start to then understand that everyone else is just as complex yeah. and just as, um, uh, you know, uh, sometimes struggling, sometimes um, thumping and excited and mm. loving life. But where, you know, we, we end up, I think, becoming more self-aware 
we end up being more compassionate. Yes. And I think that's the thing is that I, was, I know certainly for myself that there's that part of going, I'll just get all that right. Mm. And then when that's right, and you're mm. trying to simplify things, mm. but you kind of really are, we are complex beings and it's mm. never always right. You know, I often mm. talk about as a parent, I'd get everything going right and then all of a sudden it'll fall apart. But that was the nature. It yeah. wasn't like there's no point where it's all okay. It's actually, that's mm. the rhythm of life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and then what is spirituality for you? I read this question um, when you asked me to come on <laughs> this evening. Yeah. And I really love that question. In the past, spirituality meant a whole different thing to me. Mm. Um, I've unearthed, literally unearthed, a new meaning of spirituality. Wow. Um, I read this amazing book by Dan Millman. And um, it's called The Laws of the Spirit. And it was the first book that I read which was of another sort of dimension and, and weird and um, could be seen as a bit esoteric. Or, yeah. uh, and I was just so absorbed. He tells this story of a parable um, of a, a man walking through the woods. And it ends with this concept of a billion eyes peering out of one soul. <gasps> and for me, that is spirituality right now. That wow. where I have become closer to myself I have actually come closer to others mm. and there's this whole kind of premise in the world right now around that around that one consciousness and I think there's some sort of weight to that um, I think we are all interconnected in a bizarre way yeah. I, I think um, as I become more self-aware I become more self-aware of others and for me it's that understanding of the unknown and a little bit of mystery and resting in that unknown where I find my current spirituality. Yeah, beautiful. I find that in the here and now in many ways, you know, yeah. kind of decluttering my thinking and my body in a way that I can be a little bit grounded. Mm. Um, I feel more resourceful. I feel more connected to myself and others. Mm. Um, and that's helpful to my work, but it's also, I think, helpful to my personal relationships, my everything, um, everything all of the above. Because it's interesting, the whole idea around, um, I love that thinking around the space when you're meditating, mm. it's actually the space in between the thoughts where that power <laughs> and magic happens, mm. which I love as well. But you also mentioned, I think earlier tonight, we were chatting around mm. that work is about um, value base. Um, it's changed its thinking around. Uh -huh. what, what did you say then? You well, work from paycheck to purpose. Yes, um, paycheck to purpose. Love yeah, that. Yeah, the future of work is anchored in transforming ourselves from cogs into actually full blooded humans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> think yeah. and feel and have emotions, but um, also have a level of balance and can regulate that stuff yeah. in the workplace and also in any relationship that you have. And that waking up that you're talking about, the mm. spirituality, is all that process. Because I think it is happening on a conscious level everywhere. And also there are actions against that, you know, in the world yes. right now. In technology, in politics, where we're headed to like an opposite view of that yeah, in yeah, many ways. Yeah. Which is a really fascinating journey of change. Because sometimes we have to take a few steps forward and then we take some big steps back. Because that's the thing about that there's shadow and light. So the mm. more light, the more shadow is going to come up to mm. oppose and mm. interesting future. I love that. Yes. Thank you. And then um, question number four is what's the tool <laughs> that you use for challenges? Challenges, yes. I use, um, well, I started using this tool many years ago when I started my therapy and coaching journey yes. with my therapist and coach. Yes. Um, and it's Clifton Strengths Finder. And a lot of businesses in large corporates are using it, but we're actually using it in one-to-one -one therapeutic and coaching relationships, and I'm using it in organizations of 40 plus. Oh, wow. um, okay. um, I was actually in a large tech multinational the other week using the same tool. Wow. It's, a, it's a beautiful tool which unearths natural patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving. One of the talents is actually connectedness, which is this strength or this talent around understanding the interconnection to all humankind mm. which matches to my spirituality mm, mm. it's quite high in my themes um, and unpacking your natural ways of thinking feeling and behaving mm. unearths two things one which is your natural capability the goodness the the stuff that you're naturally great at 
it also brings up your challenges. Yeah. And I have a current hypothesis around weaknesses, yep. which is that they're just overplayed strengths. Oh, I love that. Yes. Or strengths that I have laid dormant for whatever reason. Yeah. I may have been yeah. told as a kid that that wasn't appropriate for my gender yeah. Yeah. or my age. And so I may have shelved it a little bit. So it may represent a challenge for me where my energy's drained or my relationships break down or um, I'm being ineffective to reaching my goals or my ambitions. And so, yeah, I, I think this tool, Clifton Strengths, we use it in therapy and coaching. Beautiful. I'll, it's I'll write beautiful. it. Yeah. yeah, put a link in. I'm going to put a link in because <laughs> I want to have a look at it myself. Yes, we should do your strengths. Yes. That's a great idea. Well, haven't we done that already? <laughs> It's a bit scary. Ah, oh, that'd be good. No, it's that'd awesome. Be good. That'd be good. It's, yes, it's, it's the top five things that you naturally do. Mm. And they've come out of a life. Yeah. They, they've come out of free personal development called life. Yeah. From birth to now. Yeah. And they, they show up. It's, they're amazing. Okay, that's the next thing. We'll be talking about that. <laughs> and uh, question number five is how did you find success in your life? What was the thing? That is such a hard question. Because that success... It's um, a word, isn't it? It's a beautiful word because it's a lot like happiness. Yeah. We define what it means. Yeah. There is no universal definition of happiness or even potentially success. Yeah. My success right now is probably sitting here with you in many ways. No, yeah. Well, because I find myself in a space where um, I've come to know a few things about change, about working through hard things, yeah. working on great things, yeah. um, of kind of uh, supporting people, but also through the pursuit of supporting myself. Um, I found success through therapy and coaching, my own yes. therapy and coaching. Yes. Um, a lot of us therapists and coaches have gone through our own support process to be able to be resourceful with those tools. So for me, my greatest success was my journey of self-awareness. Yeah, beautiful. Um, it was found in my top five strengths. As soon as I got my talents from Clifton Strengths, I woke up to why I was pissed off, why I was frustrated and angry with the people around me in my workplace. I wow. could actually rest inside of myself for the first time because this weird, overly strategic person who loved creating new relationships, who loved activating new ideas and communicating their power to the world which I couldn't do that in a large corporate because no. they thought I was bonkers. They thought I was mad. <laughs> they really did. Um, and so as soon as I could understand why I was the way I was, I started to understand my okayness. Yeah, yeah. So it is, it is that finding that thing of going, God, it's okay that I have those things. Yeah. It's, and it is what you're <laughs> saying. It's like those weaknesses, which I often talk about that we've talked about, is, yeah. is that the bits that we don't like can often turn out mm. to be our goals. And I love that you found that through that. I, I totally did. And, and through a therapeutic discussion, yes, you know, and looking at the, the hard stuff is good. And it, yes. it allowed me to find the success. That's the thing you have to do. See, looking at the hard stuff yes. is a good thing. It's, it, it is hard, though, because <laughs> it it's hard. hard. But yeah. sometimes, and the thing is that sometimes, though, which I know, God, you know this, is that we think it's harder. Yeah. Hard is actually the resistance to it is the worst part because you know once you get into it you go yeah. oh actually it's not too bad or look what I've come out of the other end so many times a client will sit in front of me and they've, they've, can they've tried to cancel a few times because of the tension <laughs> in, yeah, in yeah, showing up imagine. they sit down and they go I don't know where to begin I'm like I know how do you start to talk about a life mm. how do you start mm. to talk about the wonder of humanity in you mm. that's a really hard thing to start to talk about they finish the first session and they go, oh my gosh, that was so great to just talk about it. Like they, all they yeah, did was yeah. share the story yeah, um, yeah. in the first session, but they feel this sense of relief mm. that they, that it is valid. Their story is valid, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, Amazing thing. thing. No, mm. I love that. See, go for it. If you're thinking about it, go and do it. <laughs> go and see this man. Anyway, because uh, I love him. Okay, so here we are. Teach me something new. Oh God! <laughs> what are you going to teach? A me? lot of my thinking right yes. now is around the future. Oh yes, <laughs> Tell me. so I'm thinking about 2035, yes. um, where computers are literally forecasted to think and feel like humans. Mm. 
So it's the movement from I want that yeah. to I know I want that. And I'm pondering and I'm constantly thinking for my clients in businesses and teams, how do we need to cultivate ourselves to get ready for that future where we have mm. computing power that has sentience or emotional intelligence, can talk us through feelings and um, encourage us to kind of get back in touch with our humanity in many ways, I think. See, that's really, like that freaks me out really. Mm, it freaks a I, lot of people I out. Go, so I think someone explained to me the other day that AI is, is about, it's not even a program thing. It is like a new being that is really making decisions based on. We're building digital neural networks. So mm. the neural network in your brain right now has a hundred billion neurons. Mm. The current level of neural networks um, is one billion neurons. So we've got a while to go, yeah. but we're making advances. So this is a computer that can reference its own information and make decisions off the back of it. So the technology is important. AI is important to talk about. We, we you know, lots of people are understanding um, all of the dimensions of it. For me, in my mm. world, mm. I'm going, how can you become more self-aware? more yeah. in tune with the human humanity within you and outside yes. of you. Yeah. How can you lay down some of the things that aren't serving you, that aren't moving you forward? Um, how can you move from being a cog in a machine in a, in a team, or even as an employer supporting cogs in machines, mm. Um, mm. towards purpose, towards um, supporting lives, humanity in your businesses? It's shifting, literally shifting people from in leadership, just being bosses, telling people what to do, to actually asking what they need. We have all of the world's knowledge and wisdom, mm. maybe not wisdom, but knowledge yeah. at our fingertips. Um, now we need to show up in a different way. Yeah. We need to show up in a human vulnerable way in, in, in many ways. Um, our whole culture, our whole society has changed rapidly since Facebook um, was born. That was only about 13 years ago. It's scary, there's a lot of change. Mm. So it's an interesting conversation then. So mm. as far as AI goes, and I love that you're talking about, it's about connection yeah. and how to find connection with self yeah. through that. So what is going to happen? Just I know it's such a big question. Mm. But a little snapshot, do you think, in where people can future-proof themselves yeah. uh, with this new AI coming? Because people are frightened of losing their own jobs. Yeah. And what does it look like for them? Yeah. I don't have the, all the answers to no, that. Really? No, really? <laughs> the, no. The, the hard thing about this discussion is we don't really know how it's yeah. going to play out. Yep. Um, we don't know how the economy is going to be impacted and the business is going to be impacted. Personally, I'm asking people, how do you follow the stuff that you are naturally great at. Yes. Not the stuff that maybe the economy has asked you to become. Yeah. How can you truly work within your natural capabilities in a way um, that you find the passion and the drive? Yeah. You know, people like you are a representation of that in the world um, who have woken up and said, you know what, I could do something. Mm. And it's not always easy but I can contribute, I can serve others. Yeah. When we start to become more self-aware and more integrated into ourselves, we start looking out and we start helping others. Mm. We start giving platforms like you to other people. We start um, looking out and above ourselves. We think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs mm. and we go up yeah. in the new normal with AI towards self-actualization. Oh looking at ourselves and looking up to the stars and saying, oh, wow, I'm special, I'm a human, what's more can I explore? I think we become a lot more spiritual. I think we become a lot more integrated into um, nature. I think we start mm. returning to some of these peak experiences that we've dismissed with some of our technological um, uh, industrial revolutions of the last hundred years. I love it. I was just in a film then. <laughs> <laughs> As you were talking, I was like, I could see the whole thing. And it's so <laughs> funny how you had the balance between there's so much other difficult and challenging stuff going mm. on in the world. You know, like even yeah. David Cook last week talking yes. about 
45 million slaves, the oh. most ever that's been in history. Oh, so it's like there's this whole, is it the light and the shadow coming up yeah. as we're coming into this age of who are we if we are creating yes. AI. And, and I love that you brought that forward, that it is actually forcing us to have a meaningful life, yeah. to actually re-examine who yeah. we are and why we're doing it. And if we do more of that, we can use yeah. AI and digitification yeah. to reshape the world in another way. You know, we, we're all waking up to the fact that Facebook, you know, in the last few weeks, has had a lot of control over our personal information. I know, it's something how it's yeah. it, because they changed that thinking around, um, firstly they were saying, well, we don't want to put the businesses up forward, so they've mm. changed the whole algorithm they stuff, have, which yeah. has thrown everything. Yeah. But at the same time, it's had a reverse effect, even though they think they're doing the right thing, it's mm. disrupted the flow mm. that was naturally evolving. They've tried to control something. Yeah. There's been a backlash, I yeah. believe, to it. Yeah. Um, and then also we're saying, well, hang on, you're able to tell what's going on. Yeah. We don't like that. Yeah. Even though we've all known that that's what they're doing yeah. and we pay them to do that with advertising. But also they used a lot of our data and sold it to a company yes. to change an election or yeah, potentially so was, affect yeah. an election. And so it's just interesting that these movements towards us becoming more conscious yes. of how technology impacts us yes. and our cultural identity. Yeah. You know, we, we are going to see this rapidly change yeah. in the next handful of years. Yeah. I, I'm That's actually cool. really hopeful. I'm really excited. I love the and, and I think yeah. that if we do more of our work that we're all doing yeah, yeah. to wake people up and support them to understand their humanity and who they are, they're going to be using these tools in a different way as well. Yeah, um, so. such a big conversation. We could talk for hours. I, I can't believe what we were talking about. <laughs> I've lost track of we'll time. We'll have to come back to that one. <laughs> and then finally, of course, is what's the biggest shift you've had in your life? Oh, there's been Different. a few, but I'll just pick one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in February last year, I well, no, actually, in November of the year before last, I read a book called Presence. Mm -hmm. And it was all about becoming more mindful and present in real time to what's happening in organizations so that you can adapt quickly to cultural changes and opportunities and um, transform businesses really it's an amazing book go read it um, it's Beautiful. very cool yeah. in that book was a chapter about a guy who takes people into um, awareness retreats in like prime jungle locations and I read the chapter and I said, I will never, ever do that and closed <laughs> it. And it didn't kind of leave my orbit for about 12 hours. It was kind of like pumping through me. Um, a little bit like the Jumanji, you know, that <laughs> drum? drum. Yeah, 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 a little bit like the drum. And so I couldn't let it go. And um, I spoke to my partner and I said, look, I think I really want to do this. I think this is something that I need to do. And they were really supportive and they said, go for it. Just do it. Just make it happen. Wow. And um, I booked it, paid for it um, the next day. And I had six <laughs> months to prepare. And I, um, it was a trip to the Osa Peninsula in Costa Rica. And we had two days of sort of um, orientation and training with John Milton, who is like the father of naturism in, um, and ecology in the States. Mm. And um, he took us through this training of recognizing tension in the body and releasing it wow. um, this is what we do in therapy we yeah. notice tension and we release it um, this is what we do in a lot of um, pathways to self-awareness and understanding ourselves is we notice tension and we release it and then I walked about three hours into the jungle and I was by myself for seven days wow. um, with no human contact I lost all sight of my face and others I lost all concept of who I was for a little bit. No drugs, no funny business, just nature. Yeah. Um, and I sat and I understood more about who I was and what I needed to let go. Um, I understood that the world was complex but simple all at the same time. And I got access to a space, um, this space that I can't really describe, I can't give language to very easily, but it's an inner space and an outer space of um, the lack of tension mm. and it was a shift because I use it with my clients I find that space for me and I might offer an element of that space to people in the most chaos chaotic times mm. um, and it was just a really beautiful I got this further concept around self-awareness of 
slowly revealing who we are through layers of something i don't know um <laughs> and sometimes it's in conversations i'm yeah, even yeah. i'm even getting access to a new level of that mm. in the retelling of the story to you mm. um so that was probably the biggest shift costa rican jungle costa rican jungle would be a big shift i think for it was anyone. amazing oh how yeah, amazing it's beautiful Look, I mean, your story and what you bring is extraordinary and so privileged. We're going to be doing some work together as well in, uh, in the events and in the business work that I'm doing internal comms with uh, businesses yeah. and very excited about that. Me too. And I'm very excited for people to actually listen to you and, mm. and hear you because I just love, you know, hearing your stories and what you have to talk about. Mm. I mean, as I said, we could talk forever. We could. And please stay tuned because we'll probably do some more stuff. And uh, if you want to check out Andrew's site, go to andrewsloan.com. Dot au. Dot au. <laughs> and we'll put the link as well below. Um, we're going to have this up on iTunes and Facebook when I upload it and uh, on the site. Thank you. Thank you. And I uh, hope you've got a shift. I've certainly had a shift out of listening to you talk tonight. So I'm very privileged to have that. Thank you. And have a great night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.